Today we're going to go over resumes and cover letters. Resumes are a piece of writing. You have to think very clearly about who your audience is and target them in this piece of writing. Make sure you're concise and clear. And this is essentially a marketing tool. So you're advertising yourself to employers and you need to get your message across very quickly. Resumes are only initially scanned for five to 10 seconds long. So you have to get your message across very quickly. For this reason, you wanna put the most important and catered information to that job first. The structure of a resume is contact information, then the objective, your education qualifications, school projects that you've completed in your college education, professional experience, skills that you offer to the position, and community involvement that you've gone through. In terms of your contact information, make sure your name is very clear and the first thing that the employer sees when they scan your resume. You wanna write your address below your name and list your phone number, making sure that your voicemail message is professional in case the employer contacts you about a job. You also wanna make sure that your email is professional. This might right now be your ASU email, which is usually just your name followed by at asu.edu. Objective is the main focus of your resume. This is where you need to make sure that you keep the audience in mind. You want to focus on what you can do for the company and what you offer for the employer. The most common mistake I see are in the objectives when students highlight their own professional goals and often talk about where they wanna move on after this job position. Remember that your employer really cares about what you can offer to them and they don't wanna think about you moving on and losing you to another job further on. So make sure you focus on who your audience is and highlight what you offer to them. In terms of the objective, you also want to keep it very specific to a position within the company. So this objective should be changed with each job application. Here's a format that you can use to obtain a blank position in the blank field. See the example below, this is a very good example. To obtain a supply chain purchasing position within the Costco company, utilizing technical knowledge and negotiation skills. Make sure that you highlight your education within your resume. Obviously you're all working very hard to get a degree at ASU, so you wanna highlight this. Talk about your degree, you wanna mention it with your major and your minor and everything should be written out. In resumes, often you don't use any abbreviations at all and write everything out to be professional. You wanna write your graduation date as well. And many of you aren't fully graduated yet since you're taking classes still. So you wanna write anticipated graduation dates, which is the, the typical format. Write the name of the school, the university, the city and the state. And as you can see, this is all spelled out. So in professional resumes, you don't use any abbreviations. Make sure you write your GPA. If you want to, you can highlight your major GPA if that's better than your overall GPA. And you can list any academic honors as well below the GPA. See the following example below. Class projects are another section of your resume that we like to emphasize in CED 250. These are an important way that, especially without any work experience, you can really highlight the projects that you've done, the experience that you have for the job position. So you wanna make sure that you select projects that are appropriate for the types of occupations that you're looking for, things that apply and are um, related to the experience that these positions require. You're gonna use accomplished statements and action verbs and the following skills below that you can see on this slide showcase kind of what's expected in terms of college graduates. Below you will see an example of a course project. It's the geographic information systems and the bullet points explain exactly what this project entailed. Developed a model GIS within a team for use by director of public safety within Tempe city boundary researched, extracted, and analyzed data from U.S. Census Bureau, implemented data sets into ArcView 8.3. As you can see, this is very specific and probably would be easy to, to read for a specific occupation 
that was looking for this type of experience. So you want to make sure that you select an appropriate course project. Professional experience is one of the most important parts of your resume. You want to list the most recent job first. That should be the job that's listed first under professional experience section and then work backwards in history of jobs. Under each job position, you should list the title of the job that you had, the company name, the city, and the state. Underneath should be dates of employment. Make sure you don't use academic semesters. And then following this, you should have bullet points of accomplishment statements that detail what exactly you did in this position using action statements. A good way to go through this is to think about STAR, which is describe the situation first, the task or your role, were you providing customer service, for example, or something of that nature, action, what you did, and the result, how did it turn out? For example, increased customer loyalty. Below you will see an example of a professional experience, which is a job. You see the title is that they were a manager from August 2004 to present, which means this position is still held at this time. And they list the company very clearly and the city and the state. It states that they coordinate employee schedules, balancing daily business needs with employee availability, provide quality customer service, resolving client concerns and researching missing claims. They also motivate team members to perform essential operations efficiently and effectively. This is very clear. This paints a good picture about what this person's job entails. Make sure that you do the same when you're writing your accomplishment statements for your professional experience. Skills is another section of your resume where you want to really identify career specific skills. Any general skills such as researching, organizing, developing are not examples of skills for this section because these should have already been emphasized in the class projects section or the professional experience section. This is for specific skills that the employer might um, be looking for. For example, languages. This is a really good section for you to talk about if you're proficient or fluent or competent in another language. You can also share the computer or software um, programs and things that you're already trained in. You could say that you're proficient in Microsoft Word and PowerPoint. Those are all things that the companies that you're um, looking to get hired in might be looking for. Any sort of specific technical competencies that this occupation uh, might require would be something to emphasize. Training programs, as well as certificates, license, and awards. These are all examples of very specific skills you can highlight in this section. As you'll see below, this. This person, this is an example of someone who is fluent in English, fluent in Mandarin Chinese as well. And then computer software, they list the, the specific programs that they are already familiar with. Community involvement is another great way to highlight your resume. You want to make sure to mention student organizations that you're involved with. There's over 700 at ASU, so there's still plenty of time for you to get involved if you haven't already at this point in time. And you want to list maybe professional affiliations that are specific to your field, as well as volunteer experiences and community service. These are great ways for you to get experiences before you go out into the field, is to gain some volunteer experience in the field already. There's a few really important points to remember when thinking about resumes. You never want to use I in a resume. It's your resume, so we know that you're talking about yourself. You want to make sure that it's in professional language, which doesn't use the first person. And in addition, you want to make sure your resume fits to one page. That way, an employer, if you're faxing your resume or sending it over, and for some reason um, the pages get disconnected, they don't lose half of your resume. So keeping it really concise and just making sure that in those brief five to 10 seconds, the employer can see everything that you have to offer. In addition, use solid bullets. You wanna make sure it's very clear and easy to read. Use keywords that can be taken out from the job description. Remember you have five to 10 seconds in a lot of cases to get your point across. So do the best that you can to do so concisely. And do not use font smaller than 10 point. This can be um, difficult to read and you want to make sure the employer can, 
get through the resume with ease. Avoid using kind of embellishing with too many italics or fancy script or underlining. Um, it's easy to get your point across without getting too fancy. So avoid graphics or shading, complex layouts or columns, and lines of any kind. And the most important note is not to have any errors in your resume. This is the first impression that you get for the employer. So make sure that you double check and triple check your resume before sending it out. When you think about writing a cover letter, you want to ask yourself the following questions. What skills, qualifications, and experiences do you have to offer your targeted employers? How is this skill set related to the position you are seeking? What are your career goals and objectives as they relate to this career position specifically? Make sure to use professional, concise, and clear business letter writing. In addition, you want to orient the letters to be employer-centered, not self-centered. The most common mistake I see, like I talked about before, is when students focus on what they can gain from the employer instead of what they have to offer. So make sure you're focusing on what you offer for them, not what you want from them. In the structure of a cover letter, you're going to have usually your address on the top and then the employer's address and you'll have a formal greeting to them or a salutation. And then you're in your first paragraph, you're gonna identify your position, introduce yourself um, and who you are in the first paragraph so that you get the reader to understand how you found out about the position and, and things of that nature. In the second paragraph, you're gonna highlight two to three outstanding skills that match the job description. Be sure to include the skill and how those skills benefit the employment. The best thing that you can do is paint a picture by giving an example of how you've used that skill or how you could use that skill in the company. So you wanna make sure the employer takes away a very clear picture of you that's much more than what you've already done in your resume. This is your chance to really do that um, more than a few bullet points can. In the third paragraph, you wanna ask for the opportunity to interview or speak with them for, further for opportunity. Um, after you summarize everything up. Um, so before you even ask for that opportunity, you wanna sum up what you just said about you know, who you are, the job you're looking for, the skills that you have to offer, and then ask for an opportunity to speak with them more about the opportunity. And in addition, it's nice if you could state a follow-up um, of how you'll, you plan to follow up with the employer. And the most important thing at the end is that you thank them for the time that they've taken and just even reading through um, your cover letter and resume. These guidelines will be the basis for how their resume and cover letter assignments will be graded. Make sure you also carefully go through the rubric for these assignments.